If you're planning to read your way through the rainbow, this might just be a good way to do it. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through an entire rainbow's worth of LGBT authors. Throughout June, I try to read as many books by LGBT authors as possible, but I also feel like this is something that you should do throughout every other month of the year. Their stories are to be celebrated and their voices deserve to be heard just as much as other stories. So if you'd like to inject a little bit of color into your bookshelf, I have got the perfect suggestions for you. Quite a lot of these are going to be from the romance genre as that's something that I read quite heavily from, but there are also a couple of contemporaries and there are even a couple of non-fiction books in here for you to check out. Starting with Red, and I have chosen Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This was their debut novel and it is set on one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, a cooking show. I absolutely love any kind of book that has to do with food, that has to do with cooking or baking. So this felt like the absolute perfect thing to slot in here. Love and Other Disasters follows London and Dahlia on their way through a cooking show that is set in New Orleans. London is the show's first ever non-binary contestant and of course they are not only dealing with the pressures of being in the kitchen but also with quite a lot of vitriol and quite a lot of hate that is coming towards them from Twitter. But for every awful tweet that they're seeing, there's also so much love and so much support for them. Dahlia is another contestant on the show and she is trying to rediscover herself following a divorce. She feels a little bit like she's lost her way in life, like she's not entirely sure where she's going to be going, but heading for a cooking show feels like the best way for her to get her life back on track. London and Dahlia's chemistry isn't just great in the kitchen on the show, it also absolutely sparkles when they're getting to know each other off camera. And I absolutely loved this book. This was Anita Kelly's debut and they've also got two other books. I would absolutely recommend that you go and check out How To Get The Girl if you love a sports romance, if you're big into basketball, but if you want something that's a little bit more adventurous, why don't you go and check out Something Wild and Wonderful, which takes place along the Pacific North Coast Trail. For Orange, I've gone with the Falling in Love montage by Kira Smith. This is set in Ireland. It is a YA romance and it is about Saoirse and Ruby. Saoirse is about 15 or 16 and she has just discovered that the dementia that her mother is suffering from could be hereditary and that she may also have a chance of developing dementia later in her life. Saoirse is a connoisseur of horror films. She loves a good scare, she loves something that's a little bit spooky, but when Ruby comes and visits the town where Saoirse lives for the summer, they spend an entire summer getting to know each other and Ruby takes it upon herself to kind of buoy Saoirse's mood back up. She's going to introduce Saoirse to an entire world of romance, of rom-coms, of all of that kind of fuzzy feeling that you're getting when you're watching your favorite movie. And they are going to have their own falling in love montage over the summer. They're gonna go on dates. They're gonna do all of the cliche things that you will have seen in a romance book. And of course, that means that they're gonna end up falling in love with each other. I also loved Not My Problem, which is Kira's second book. And I'm not entirely sure if she's working on anything at the moment, but whatever it is that she decides to bring out, I am 100% there and behind her. For Yellow, it had to be the absolutely iconic Yellow Face by RF Kuang. This is one of the most striking covers you will ever see. Yellow Face follows June and Athena. They are two friends who've met each other at a riding course when they were in college, and their friendship has expanded outside of that time, but it has sort of staled a little bit. Both of them are writers, but they have very varying degrees of success. Athena has had awards thrown at her. Her books continuously appear on bestseller lists, whereas June didn't even make her advancement back. One night when the two are together, Athena passes away in a completely freak accident, leaving June with completely untethered access to all of Athena's manuscripts, including a book that Athena had been working on about Chinese prisoners of war during World War II. June takes it upon herself to bring all of these manuscripts home with her and to publish Athena's work as her own. This is bad enough, but when you remember that June is a white author and Athena is of Asian descent, it's even worse. The entire book opens a really great conversation about the publishing industry and just how much they can push a book and how much they can really put behind one book comparison to another. It also opens up a discussion about race and who is entitled to tell what stories. 
This is one of the best books I've read in such a long time. I completely sped through it the two times that I've read it. And I would implore you to go and pick this one up if you've not experienced anything from RF Kuang yet, but you want to go and check out her work. For green, I have gone with Love That Story by Jonathan Van Ness. They are one of the breakout stars from Queer Eye over the last five or so years. And they have such an amazing on-screen personality that this book is just over spilling with. This is their second memoir. I also really recommend Over the Top as that goes through a lot of the casting process for Queer Eye. A lot of Jonathan's background growing up as a young gay person in a small town in Illinois. I really enjoy both of the books that they have written so far. This one goes a little bit deeper into life after Queer Eye got so big and the whole changes that have happened in Jonathan's life. I will, however, tell you that there is a trigger warning for animal death quite early on in this book. It wasn't something that I knew was going to come and it was something that completely threw me off kilter when I was reading this. So if animal death is something that makes you a little bit iffy, maybe I would avoid chapter two of this book. This one is not arguably very blue. It's kind of a teal, mint green, I know, but hear me out. For blue, I have gone with Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. Kevin Kwan is a little bit more known as the writer of the Crazy Rich Asian series, but this was his first book outside of that trilogy. It is about Lucy and George who meet each other at a wedding in Capri and instantly there is friction between the two of them. They cannot stand to be in the same room for a couple of minutes, but it's only for a weekend, so they decide to just cut their losses and go their other ways. Until a couple of years later, when Lucy is holidaying in the Hamptons with her now fiance, and George is just everywhere that she turns. You have a feeling that throughout this book, the feelings that are between Lucy and George are going to start to become a lot more apparent. This is not Kevin Kwan's most recent book. I think it's Lies and Weddings that has just come out. And I am so excited to get my hands on that. I know that I love his writing style. I know that I love how completely hilarious the books can be. So I've definitely got to go and check that out. For an indigo book written by an LGBT author, I implore you to go and check out The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. Emma Donoghue writes a lot of contemporary fiction, but she also writes a lot of historical fiction. And to be honest, I think that's where her strengths really shine. The Pull of the Stars is set in 1918 in Dublin, which is right at the height of the Spanish flu pandemic. This would be bad enough and people would be already badly affected, but the book takes place in a maternity hospital in Dublin. So not only are you seeing young mothers having to deal with the side effects of the Spanish influenza, but they are also bringing children into the world, bringing life into the world. Some of them not being able to stay around to see their children grow up. Some of them actually birthing stillborn babies themselves. The book is completely heartbreaking, but there is such a beautiful romance that blossoms about 70 or 80% of the way through this book. The ending will completely rip you into shreds, but I absolutely think this is one you definitely need to go and check out. For a purple book written by an LGBT author, I would absolutely recommend Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This is the first in the Bright Thralls trilogy, and I think it is the first adult book that Ashley Herring Blake was written. This follows Delilah, who is a photographer living in New York. She has escaped from the small town where she grew up about 10 years previous to the start of this book. However, her stepsister Astrid is getting married in about two weeks and Delilah has to go back to Bright Falls so that she can take pictures before the wedding starts, to be there for when the wedding itself actually is happening and to just be there in the run up to the ceremony. What Delilah isn't expecting is that Astrid is still very close friends with Claire, who she had known when she was in high school and on whom Delilah had an insanely massive crush. While Delilah and Claire are together, sparks really start to fly between the two of them, which is a little bit confusing for Claire, as she has never particularly explored her sexuality and isn't particularly sure what these feelings that she's feeling are. It also brings a little bit more for Claire, as she is a single mother and she is still in a quite tumultuous platonic relationship with the father of her child. You see him dotting in and out of the book and in and out of Claire and Ruby's lives, but I completely love how over the course of these three books, you get to see Ruby kind of grow up a little bit more. You get to see a really great friendship between Claire, Astrid and Iris. And also you get to see a little bit more of the small town vibes that I truly love in books. But of course, the colors that are represented by the LGBT spectrum don't just stop at the seven colors of the rainbow. 
for a book with a pink cover that was written by an LGBT author, I absolutely recommend Love That Journey For You by Dr. Emily Garside. This is a phenomenal look at the absolutely incredible series that is Schitt's Creek. Shits Creek is one of the best series that I have seen in such a long time. It is my comfort show that I go to if I'm feeling down or if I just want to have something on in the background while I'm cleaning or while I'm cooking. And it really goes in such great detail about the town itself, about the characters. And there is a series by series deep dive into the entire show. Dr. Emily Garside has also written a book about Patrick and David's relationship specifically called You're My Happy Ending, and it's one that is definitely on my side. This book is also super short. It barely even touches at 100 pages. So if you're a big Shits Creek fan, it is definitely something that you can knock out in a day. For a book with a brown cover by an LGBT author, I have gone with Truly Madly Deeply by Alexandria Belfour. I have loved every single book that she has written so far. I cannot wait to dive into this one. I know that Brianna and Cal did this as part of their Not Your Mom's Boozy Book Club and both of them fell completely in love with it. So I have got very high hopes. This is about Truly and Colin who are brought together to host a podcast about failed relationships and about dating, but they don't particularly get on super well on the first time that they meet each other. When they go their separate ways, Colin gets back in touch with Truly and asks for a second chance. He is completely groveling and he is owning up to the mistakes that he has made. So Truly decides that she's going to let him in for this time. As the show progresses and they start to learn a little bit more about each other and they discover that they have quite a lot of things in common that would make them a really great team to host this podcast together, the ice between the two of them starts to slowly thaw. I am so intrigued by how this book is going to go. And when I know that some of my closest friends in the book world have loved this book, it's just spurring me on even more. For a book with a black cover written by an LGBT author, I cannot wait to get started on Fingersmith. Across the amazing readers on, so many people on my team read this one and said that it engrossed them, that it was one of the best books that they had read for the entire readathon. So I really have to get reading it because I now have so much FOMO. This is about Sue Trinder, who is a fingersmith or a thief and is growing up in London as an orphan, but under the care of a young woman named Mrs. Suxby. What Sue doesn't know is that there is another orphan far across the country and Sue has got a connection with this orphan that she had never imagined would happen. That is all I know about this book. I'm going to go into the rest of it completely blind, but I know that there are a couple of things in here that are really going to knock my socks off. Finally, for a book written by an LGBT author that has a white cover, every single time somebody asks me what I would recommend to them as a starter for a romance novel, it has to be The Brown Sisters. I absolutely love all three of these women. They are chaotic, they are fresh, they are funny. Every single one of these three sisters has a completely independent personality. You can instantly tell that you are reading Chloe's book. You can instantly tell that you are reading Danny's or Eve's. They have such distinctive personalities and such distinctive voices. It's so phenomenal to see it, especially when you remember that these three are sisters. They are intrinsically tied together, but they feel so individual. What I also love about these books is that they are full of representation. Chloe is suffering from fibromyalgia, Danny is bisexual, and Eve is starting to question her neurodivergence. I absolutely adore these books. They are quite spicy, but they're not as spicy as the indie books that Tally would have published before. So if you want something that is quite hot, but not super high on heat, these are the ones that you need to go for. That is an entire rainbow of representation for you to go and read. What is your favorite book by an LGBT author or who is your favorite LGBT author? If you would love to leave me a comment, but you can't think of anything you'd like to say, then just leave me a rainbow emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.